Simon from the yeah. school board. Lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you too, Steve. Um, if you could just introduce yourself um, and tell us how you're connected to the film. I know. And I know okay. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just for the, for the um, convenience of the people watching the, the, the video interview. So um, I'm Paloma. Um, I live here in London. I attended uh, film school here in London and um, I graduated a year ago. And the, film sc the, the, the school board was actually my film graduation yeah. project um, for film school at the Ealing Studios here in London. So I always wanted to be um, a director and a writer. Um, I was reading a lot when I was a kid, watching a lot of films, and um, so I got into writing, and through writing I kind of got into the film industry, and uh, yes, yeah, screenwriting mainly, and then directing. So the schoolboy was um, written and directed by me. And um, how long, how long did it take from the initial idea to actually finish oh. the show? Oh my gosh! So the initial idea, so well, kind of started five years ago. It wasn't really an idea; it was more of a personal interest. So I did a research for years and years. I just read books over um, the subject that the film deals with, and um, kind of really dig deep into it and when then you know my master's degree came up and they were saying you have to make a film at the end of the year um i couldn't make tomatoes you know to make this i um i think it took me around i'd say four months to really get from the idea to like write a story to write the screenplay you know to kind of finish it off it took me like four months it took me two nights to write it, but in my head it was sort of a process of four months. Well, the honing it down to the, the finish. Yeah, 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 yeah. To really like make a story out of this greater subject, you know, that I was really interested with, uh, in. And um, so, just uh, from the script to the shooting, I think I had around four to five weeks prep, which wasn't very much. No. And um, we shot to film a very low budget on. I think it was. It's like five days, and we had limited shooting times, which, yeah, kind of a restricted schedule because of our locations. But you know, it was a student project, and it came out very well. So I'm very happy about it. No, and I'm, I've seen the film. This oh, is a fantastic you. film. So you, you're doing your masters. You know, at the end of the process, you've got to make a film, and that's just yeah, part of the sure. course. Yeah. But sorry, what I meant to say was, but what particularly made you choose that subject? That to subject particularly. Well, it was I think in. 2010, I saw um, the documentary Bowling for Columbine right, okay, yeah. by Michael Moore, and that really triggered a deep interest in, in, in to that subject that that documentary actually deals with. Because mm. it kind of deals with a lot of like different themes, but I thought there was one theme that was very underdeveloped in the documentary, so I kind of started my own research. Because yeah. that's quite because that's a quite a long time after the film. Because I think now, yeah, seventeen I years. I couldn't believe it, it's like seventeen yeah. years ago, isn't it? Yeah, I've never. You see, like I, I never saw the film, and then I think it was. I can't even remember why I watched it. I think it was just one night. I was kind of bored, went to watch a documentary, and then I watched it, and I was very, very interested in everything that the documentary was dealing about. Yeah. And how did you get the because? Uh, I know the boy's gone on to the young lad in it. He's gone on to do other things. But how did yeah. you? Yeah, how did you cast them? How did, well, oh, yeah, the main the cast. Process. Yeah. So basically, it was very weird because for this role in particular, um, I had a very particular image of someone, you know, and it it was kind of very very particular. And I thought I would never find this actor who can play this role and who can make it believable. Um, so I kind of went through casting agencies, you know, just portfolios, uh, showreels, many people. And then I found um, Charlie and I uh, actually contacted him saying if he would be up to do some work with me and if he would like to meet me. So he met me and he was very interested in the project immediately. And then um, we did a casting session and he was great. It was like one of his first projects ever. So his um, acting experience wasn't very high or anything uh, that, yeah, yeah, at that point. Yeah. Um, but we, we did a lot of rehearsing. He exact, I gave him a lot of material too, um, a lot of background story, a lot of research that I did over the years. Oh, right, so he could the, layer the so character. Could, yeah, 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 absolutely. I gave him a lot of background information that would enrich his character so mm. his performance would stand out and would be remarkable in the end, you know. And I was really, um, I really wanted that character to be very 
striking in a way, even though he's not, you know, he's a supporting character at the end of the day, but he's very, very important for the story. Because it's really it more about the, the teacher, It's more about a, a, the teacher who's going through um, a traumatic experience and she's haunted by survivor skills because of what happens in the story. Yeah. And um, so we really experience, we kind of relive this guild through her perspective. And um, she kind of leads us because she kind of had a deeper insight into Charlie's character. So that's how we find out more about what actually happened. And I think at the end you want to rewatch the film too. It's kind of giving you a retrospective mm. view because you kind of want to analyze what actually led through, like kind of what led up to this event and how it was caused. When you do the the um, the cast or the casting calls, when you're actually yeah. preparing and trying to find out if you've got the right person, do you actually have the key cast? acting against each other, you, is that not done, or is it separated? It's done very spontaneously. I like cast people separately, um, in separate castings usually, and um, it's kind of more, I mean, I had to cast a lot of people for the teacher, that was very difficult. Yeah, she's excellent. It was very difficult to find someone, because she can just, you know, talk through her eyes, and yeah. I wanted someone who can literally talk with their eyes and not say too much dialogue, you know, and who really lifts like can relive all this because you know it was um it's kind of a bonus you know that but she she's kind of a, a theater actress so she wasn't very used to the camera at first but we got there like very very easily together um she was very very easy to work with and very talented too and she kind of felt confident because it was, it was kind of intimidating you know the first day on set mm. having so many people around you and then crying pouring tears the first thing you do spontaneously. Yeah. Okay, I don't know how they do that. It's un unbelievable how they manage to. Yeah. But then I suppose that's yeah. their craft, isn't it? But but the casting, you know, it was kind of dif difficult to find a teacher. Whereas with other people, it was easy. It's kind of organic how I do it. I don't really like to force castings because I want to get to know the person too. I don't want to just get to know the actor. I also want to get to yes. know the person. Yeah, of Because I find that very important as a director to work with someone, you know, you can relate to and who finds. Um, the same sort of essence in your story and who wants to sort of convey the same story on screen than you and you know that you had in your initial vision for example as a director because they really have to understand what I want to say with the film so when, when you're casting yeah. are you looking for these nuances yeah, something always, that makes them stand out yeah I also, I also ask um, my actors so what do you think about your character you know how does he develop through the story or what are his flaws? You know, maybe they're coming up with something I didn't even think of, mm. and they can give me something more, and they can enrich the story. But usually, it's very much like I cast the people want the same sort of wavelength than me with the story. Yeah. And what was the most positive thing that that came out of the f making the film? Oh, uh, I think um, the response to it. To be honest, um, we made this. It was for me. It was a student assignment, more or less. But I knew it was very important at the time because of its relevance. So I really focused on um, getting it out there and making people, you know, like making it possible for people to watch it yeah. at festivals and really getting out there. And it was amazing because I went to America too with the film. The response there was great. Oh, you have taken it to the States? Oh, yeah, 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 to like many film festivals and the state, they responded very well to it. and. Um, I did a lot of Q and A's where people shared their personal experiences too, and it was very touching. It was great, like what has come out of, you know, the aftermath actually of the film was very, very interesting and very enriching for me as a person too. I met a lot of amazing filmmakers mm, through this experience, and um, yeah, yeah. So it was, it was a great decision. And yeah. is, there, is there anything you wish you'd have done differently? I mean, yeah. everything's easier in hindsight, I of mean, course. I mean, you know, you can always say that. Uh, I wish maybe we didn't have... Like, maybe we could have had more time, but I think that's what everyone is going to say. Oh, it's all the first you thing You know, say, it's yeah. always like, wish you had more time to do this and that. And that. But, but, you know, to be honest, I think it is what it is at the end of the day. It's getting accepted for what it is, and um, I'm very happy. I wouldn't really change much... Um, I would love to make a feature maybe out of it, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, that would be, like yeah. That. Um, that would be potential idea that I had. Uh, oh, well, sorry, so to take the story and expand yeah, on it. Yeah, and expand right. it, because it's like, you know, you can definitely make that. I sort of always see my films as a bigger universe and want to make a short film also because of budget restrictions, yeah. you know. 
you kind of have to dive into the um the microverse of this like huge macroverse that you create so it's really about um finding those glimpses in the lives of those characters that tell the story in the time that you're given and and how important was you did you use social media to to um, enhance this yeah i sort of do um i sort of use like platforms like facebook twitter um my homepage um, but also mouth to mouth, also just going to film festivals, trying it, you know, and um, yeah, that was it was great so far. I mean, I reached out to a lot of people, and that was the main goal with was, the project. And, and was it always um, your intention to do this through film festivals? Was it always that something that just popped up no. during the process? See, I I didn't know because when you make a film, you can't be a hundred percent sure how it's going to turn out, right? Mm -hmm. So. You kind of have this, um, this like fear of like, oh my gosh, you're in post production, you're viewing only mistakes, you don't know how anyone's gonna respond. But then I had the graduation screening with all my fellow um, students, my my friends, and everyone responded very very well to the film. And right. So I've seen audiences reacting to it, and then I thought I should really get it out there and make a large audience see the film. Oh, and it's worked well. It worked well, yeah. yeah. Um, one thing that's often said is that when a filmmaker makes a film, it's all about the script, mm -hmm. and it, and that's the big part of the film. Is that true? Is it is it all about the script? No, it can't all be about the script, but you know, is that the biggest chunk of it? I think it's the start of a bigger journey because a film can't be made with a piece of paper. You always have to think about that. It's always in someone's head. So the most important thing about a film is communication. Mm. That's what I would say. That's the vital thing. If you have a great story on paper, you can give it to someone and they can make the worst film out of it because the chemistry of all these different ingredients, you know, it's not going to work because maybe one department didn't communicate properly. So everything's going to fall apart. So a film is really like, it's like built up on each other. And I think the foundation of all of that is basically the screenplay but you have to make it into a piece of film, which is the translation from the screenplay into um, what my job is as a director, making it work on a film set and then making it work on post. So it's a whole bunch of different things. And I think everyone is equally important, you know, um, to make a film work um, at a certain degree, I think, yeah, definitely. Did, did you... Um did you storyboard this as well? No, I don't like storyboarding. You don't? Um, I feel like storyboarding is very much if you have um, a lot of complicated shots, a lot of um, more of, um, for me personally speaking, um, and for more of like action sequences and like, you know, if the camera, if you really have to storyboard something to make it very precise. But with my thing, it was more drama based, you know, mm. it was more about emotions, it was more about, so I had, um, um, my DOP, you know, I had a lot of, um, I had a lot, like, I kind of like talked a lot to her about how I wanted to convey a lot of emotions in their eyes and with, you know, with looks. It wasn't very like action based, so I didn't really think it was necessary to storyboard it because I, I saw it in my no, head. No, I understand. Yeah, it's quite cerebral, it isn't head, it? Yeah. You know? I, I'm not one of these people. I kind of like it organic going on a film set because if you storyboard it you have another piece of something that you visualize and you put on on paper you know yeah. and I feel like it's always good to have an open mind to what's actually happening on a film set so I mean it's necessary for a couple of, for, for certain scenes but not for this film yeah. and and what do you think um, what do you think audiences want audiences want and, and, and what when sense? they go to see a film what do you think you know how, oh, you, yeah uh, I think well I think they want to be um they want to relate to the characters. Mostly they want to be satisfied. Um, they also want to see something original, something yeah. that they don't see every day, maybe something that wants to make them get up, get out the house, go to a cinema, pay for a film, you know, and be entertained. And I think it's very important to make films that touch your soul. Okay. Um, yeah, in uh, one way or the other that leave you with some sort of experience when you walk out of them, yeah. Okay, a tricky last question. <laughs> What's your favourite film? Oh, no, no, favourite films, really. I love a lot. I mean, I, I have so many favourite films, you know. But um, 
if you mm. had to make one, I think there might be any. If there's one you've seen, you thought, I wish I'd have made that or could make that. Oh my gosh. Because um, well, I don't have a favourite. I've got five or ten. I'd be oh, impossible so for me to many. pin down. Listen, The Lord of the Rings, probably, because it's like my most favourite film of all time. Well, the, the trilogy, yeah. The trilogy, yeah. Um, just because it probably made me want to make films. Because when I was a kid, I saw it and I thought it was really epic, and it was probably back then, in the, you know, back then, back in the days. Um, that was just, you know, visually nothing like that. Oh, it was astounding at the time. Ever existed. So I love that film. But it's, you know, nowadays I sort of developed. So I love a bunch of other films. I really like uh, Charlie Kaufman as a writer. Mm. I love Adaptation. I love Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Oh, that's fantastic, yeah. I love being John Malkovich. Yeah. Um, all of his films are amazing. So he is a genius. Yeah. So um, directing wise, I also like Tarantino a lot. Uh, I got a lot of like different um, directors. I also like um, Korean cinema. I like Old Boy. Uh, old Boy's one, yeah, it's amazing. Brilliant. Yeah, it's an amazing, <laughs> amazing film, cinematography, yeah. great story. The se- well, the st- great we're going to see. I said we're going off piece of the sequence of the lift yeah. in the fight sequence is just yeah, incredible. Yeah, no, it's incredible. Like you know, you just see something like that and it just makes you speechless, and you will always remember these scenes. So yeah. there's a lot of good, good films. I mean, I just love film in general. So. Don't I love asking that question yeah, because sure. I know it's, it's not tricky. It's tricky. It's, it's tricky. So tricky, and and it, and the reason I love asking is because every I don't ask that many filmmakers. Whenever I ask mm. them, I don't think any of them's ever given me a single film. They've yeah. always basically said what you said. They yeah. can't answer. I can't answer. It. I mean, it goes off from one film that you like, and you will always like that. But then you know you kind of build up a whole kind of library almost of like films that you like. So. Yeah. Uh, it's very very tricky because every film has like a life of its own so it's very hard to answer that you know okay thank you lovely thank you you very much much. wonderful thank you right now i can only confirm that most of you still have a lot of work ahead, judging by your test results. The story is about the last judgment, which was spoken upon the Ice King's disobedient nation, because they denied him as their king due to his very nature. Does anyone know where Michael is? Did he call to say he was sick or delayed, maybe? Sorry, I have no idea. 